Our dream hack saga continues, ladies and gentlemen. Spawning here in the lower left corner of the map, representing Team Liquid. Spawning red, it is Rhett. And his opponent from Team Evil Genius is up 1-0 in this series. The green Protoss player, Huck. All right, dude, camera is on you. I'll be back in just a sec. All right. So, number one, can a brother get a retweet? I have just tweeted about this series, tweeted that we're back online, and I want you to go on to the Twitterverse, go to at Doom Esports, hit the retweet button on my last tweet, and let the world know that we are casting this awesome and amazing series. Two players from two of the top North American StarCraft II teams competing in the group stages, the second group stage of DreamHack Bucharest. Liquid Rhett, down 0-1. Looked like he had a pretty decent opportunity to take that game once Huck was trying to establish that third base. But really opportune force fields drove Huck to victory there. And uh, Whirlwind is it a peculiar map to have the second match on. Uh, early pools can be something you can do, especially if you locate your opponent right off the bat. But Rhett doesn't seem to be too focused on that right now, appearing to be taking this early hatchery. We'll be seeing Huck. In the early stages of the game with this Overlord once it reaches the top here. But Huck, you know, last game went for that in-base gateway play. It was a, a peculiar style and got a couple of stalkers across the field, really nullified the third base of Rhett. But on Whirlwind, I think he's going to feel more comfortable to take bases. And uh, as we see with this Nexus going down first, he's switching the style up immediately. I have returned. Sorry about that, man. I just could not wait any longer. I'm riffing. Nature calls. Nature calls. It happens. Major calls, but so does DreamHack Bucharest, my friend. Oh, that does. And when it when it calls, you pick up the phone. All right, it's like a pretty girl when she when she calls you late at night and you're you're groggy, you're feeling crappy. You just gotta pick up the phone anyway because just stop. gotta be a man. <laughs> just stop. Now this is actually kind of interesting. Huck putting his forge in base. I don't know if you touched uh, touched up on this or not, but this is Where gonna keep it incredibly safe. And to me, that says he's going to be really valuing his upgrades in this matchup, which means we might see a similar push to last game. A lot of why that worked really well for Hawk was well, definitely part of his army composition, but also because he had level 3 upgrades so fast. Yes, that was awfully quick that he established that, and that was just due in part to him protecting his, his base. I mean, Rhett really tried to get some run buys established. He really, really did to try to make some, some noise down at the base of Huck, but he was never able to get in, never able to crack that zealot barrier, that sentry barrier there. And without that damage, it just really let Huck do whatever he wants. And you know these situations. If you're the Zerg player and you get to get away with your plan, well, you're just going to crush your opponent. If you're the Protoss, it's the same way. So I feel like Huck was able to, to put Rhett on the back foot, kind of take him off balance, and, and really take advantage of that in the last game. So you mean he's able to be cheekier, better? <laughs> Yeah, man. He's able to throw the jab and then follow it up with the left hook. That's the, the one-two, baby. Man, for cereal with this. But anyway, uh, you know, actually, it's kind of interesting. He decides to keep the forge safe and puts the cyber core on the front lines. I I will have to one day just master Protoss so I can understand the logic behind that. Mm. It's like, oh, the uh, stalker is a pretty important unit. Well, I guess actually not for Hawk, not in that last game, but generically, oh, a stalker is a pretty good unit. Straight up zealot archon to to try to take it down. Which is kind of interesting because often you see Zelda Archon off of failed DTs. Rarely do you see someone go straight mm. for it and make that blitz as like their primary goal. I'm very curious to know if these guys practice with each other or play each other. Like, is that just is that not something I should assume? Or uh, like, I don't know. They used it's, to be teammates, so it's weird. Like a lot of players have different personality clashes. Some players love each other, and some players that you wouldn't expect to hate each other absolutely loathe one another. Mm. So. <laughs> I mean, in the public eye, these guys might be friendly, but on a personal level, they may hate each other's guts, or completely vice versa. It's so hard to tell with StarCraft players. But uh, I keep an eye on this, because I was curious what he was going to do. The pylon is going to come down here in the lower right. It will at least establish a proxy location. Kind of far away, but a uh, proxy location nonetheless. I really feel this is shaping up to be like a 7-gate all-in, just based on what Hawks are doing, um, especially considering that, I... that plus one is almost halfway done. Yeah, the plus one came out really early, but I don't know if this would necessarily be Puck pushing for an all-in. I mean, he could certainly make it work, and if he gets away the pylons, absolutely, he can make it work, but... Well, imagine if Puck was playing instead of Huck, Rifkin. That would be... that would be grand, wouldn't it? Just glad they're not playing each other. That would be a hell of a hellish match to cast. Oh, well, as I mentioned before, Huck is the only North American representative in the DreamHack 
uh, this weekend. So a lot of pressure on him. He is, I would say, the foreign hope, at least the foreigns, foreigners of not uh, North just America. Not just North American, dude, but he is a fellow Canadian. Yeah. For Mother Canada. <laughs> Nobody says that. Nobody <laughs> says that. But looks like you're right in your gateway assessment, Doom. He is going to put down five more, which will give him the grand total of seven. Now, we'll see if he goes for an all-in off this or not. He's going to need more sentries on the field if he wants to push, though. He's only got, I think, one at the moment. And the foresight here from Huck is is kind of, is, is really cool. The, the the pylon, was that scouted out by Red? No, just barely this Overlord not getting to see it. The other one as well, just out of vision for him here. So kind of inopportune situation, but Brett's got to know what's going on, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, you don't typically find a pylon or probe trying to put a pylon down at your fourth base location unless something is going to follow suit. So he may have thought he cleaned up everything on the field and might think he's safe for the time being, but I mean... I got flings to try to check it out. Yeah, he's going to go to the wrong spot. Come, yeah, once it comes through these bushes, though. Oh, and he sees it. Yeah, but it's already Zealous it here, so the Lings can't really do too much about it. More Zealous Warping in here, of course, with the plus one weapons. Again, guys, I need to reiterate, they two-shot Lings instead of three-shot them. This is a significant difference when it comes to thinning out the herd. Both guys got a lot of minerals in the banks. So they're going to be able to produce a lot of units off this. It's going to be a matter who has the better positioning and the better composition here. Huck t looking like he's taking the upper hand here, going to drop a roach right off the bat. And as these units are oh. coming in piecemeal here, this is an opportune situation for Huck. Yeah, the roach actually lives to see another day. Roach, actually, Zell's going to be suicided into this, but of course, he's got that mothership core. And if he can just kill that queen, there'll be nothing to shoot up. Great time warps here from Huck, really limiting the micro ability of Rhett. And as the links are popping out here, they're going to flood into Zealous and have good surface area or good yeah, positioning. Yeah, he's been cutting off reinforcements with those Zealous at the ramp. Three more zealots here in the mineral line, though. Or sorry, two more even. Or no, yeah, it is three. I'm going to do a ton of damage. A couple roaches are all that remains. This base is going to get cleared out if he's not careful. Mothership Core is still standing, but here comes that second warp and of a lot of zealots. Oh my gosh, and the zealot, the smallest zealot contingent that actually came in was able to handle the, the lings that tried to run by from the back. And as these zealots continue to flood in here, Red's forced those, to evacuate this base. It's those plus one weapon, man. They are so strong. And Hawk, I like that he's not choosing to focus on the hatchery. He may turn around for this. Once you realize, yeah, once you realize how far away is, the drones have gone, but Absolutely. there's there's very little chance of him stopping this. I mean, Huck just needs to warp in a couple more units, but Doom, really important behind this. Do you see what upgrade Huck is currently going for? It looks like he's going for air armor level one Rifkin without a Stargate on the field. That is like the biggest misclick I've <laughs> so ever seen. Meta. <laughs> Well, he's going to drop the third base. Absolutely worth it, too. I mean, when you shut down the Zerg player's third, it's so powerful, so critical. Wow. Why can't so I hit escape to... What? There we go. What was Huck trying to go for from the gateway, if not air armor? I, I don't know. Like I want to say it's a misclick, <laughs> but why would you actively click on the Cybergore? His, his late game maybe like eventually transfer into... I, I, it just seems like a misclick to me, but we'll see what happens with the follow-up. Being more gateways on the field, a Robo coming out as well. Hydralisk's already being made, though, and you know right now what Huck has had on the field has been great against everything except Hydralisks. Yeah, and the numbers are just growing here for Rhett, despite losing that third base. Going to try to establish a fourth base at the same time. You know, someone in chat is trying to call carriers. If these are carriers, I will flip my my bananas because I'm trying to be a PC right oh. now. Great force fields there from Huck. Even better way to finish it off. Rhett is forced on a decision here to try to push forward here. But Meat the grinder goes down. Those Ooh. zealots are doing a lot of damage. But here come the hydros <laughs> to reinforce. He's got to back up. Huck getting some, he's getting some stalkers in here. But again, another great set of force fields. Loses the mothership core. Really unfortunate that that happened. But he's going to catch some more hydros on the way out. I absolutely love the decision warp and stalkers there. They are pretty much the equivalent of Hydras in this situation. And with the force fields to back away, split up the army, it, it just put him in a great position to pick off a couple of units there and, and slim down the army size of Rhett. But looking at the overall army supplies, Rhett was 78, Huck at 52. It's all going to come down to the force fields, Ripken. Can you imagine if the Sagas actually attacked as fast as Hydralisks? Oh my god. Amazing. <laughs> as if they didn't do enough damage as is, but okay. With Blink too? So. Yeah, we got some more forces going to oh. cut up this army. Zealots are going to get right on top of the Hydralisks. There's nothing to stop them. The Sentry's even doing some extra damage on this too. There's not a lot of Stalkers, but not a lot of Stalkers are necessary. He's catching this. The, oh, the Immortal Pops and the Roaches on the side are going to go down as well. And Rhett is struggling to cause damage to Hawk. I, I, and there's no escape path here. He's going to be sacrificing these units in their entirety. He's just established his third base, just established that fourth base, but no drones have moved. And Brett's just going to tap out. A 2 0 for Hawk. I did we didn't not even see try that. to push it forward. 
Oh, he just couldn't. I think he recognized he was too far behind after losing that third base, but really well played by our Canadian Protoss player from Evil Geniuses, Huck. Uh, Rip Rifkin, you got to think about the mindsets of these players having that very long delay, have to be forced oh, into dude. these games right off the bat. It's got to be affecting Rhett's mental at this point. I would be so tilted if I was Rhett right now.